This is Eagle Al, and today we're going to talk about Jalen Hurts. We need him to win games. Also, we got to talk about Britton Covey and why I believe he deserved every single target. Lastly, Devin White, he still remains positive, but let's get straight into it. All right, man, before we hop straight into it, the injury report came out. And my guy, A.J. Brown, still hurt. Still hurt with that freaking hamstring. I think it's going to be an extra week or so. That bye week, week five, is actually becoming a positive thing on our side. Just in case, you know, he got to miss the next two weeks against the Saints, against Tampa. You still got that week five, and he could come back that week. And I think we should do that. I really do. Because we need... A.J. Brown down the stretch. While we all freaking out, you got Eagle Al crashing out. You got other content creators crashing out. But at the end of the day, we're one and one. We're one and one. So, again, we're going to need A.J. Brown towards the latter of the season. Maybe we could get hot. So, that's the positive I'm taking out of this. Well, I love A.J. Brown against the Saints, absolutely. But my guy... Jalen Hurts got to find a way to win. He got to find a way to win without A.J. Brown. He's saying like, yo, we we going to shake back. We lost. It is what it is. I talked to the team, and he believes the Eagles will shake back. But let me play this clip. More emotion than we typically see. I, I, I don't think I've seen you spike the ball before like that. I, mean, I, didn't, very... know, I didn't know I could get flagged for that, so but, if I would have known that, I probably wouldn't have done it. But was there... Any particular impetus for that type of outward emotion? Um, no, honestly, I uh, I wanted the stadium to feel me, and I, you know, it's a, it was a, it was one of those games where we we needed everyone, and when I mean everyone, we need to, you know, all three phases and uh, every every seat that was filled in that in that stadium in the link, and um, you know, I think it definitely got a good spike of energy. We came up short. And uh, we'll, we'll have another opportunity here soon to, to uh, you know, shake back from that. Is there, with the, with the illegal down? That's, that's my guy. That's my guy, Jalen Hurts. That's the guy I like to hear. And I seen some on Twitter, like, they was trying to do Jalen Hurts dirty, like, saying, like, oh, here he go, bitching about excuses, this and that. I'm like, I'm reading a quote. I'm like, this is some clickbait BS. That's clickbait bullshit because they were saying like, oh, Jalen Hurst trying to use that he was sick as an excuse. But the reporter clearly asked him like, oh, yeah, you gave a speech. That's why your voice was hoarse, this and that. He was like, nah, man, I, I, I was sick. I was dealing with something. But let me play this clip. Is that why um, your, your horse were you because you're speaking loud, or is it... I was battling something all week, and so I actually lost my voice the day of the game, or that morning, yesterday, the day before, and then the day of the game, I lost my voice, and um, ended up being able to get it back a little bit enough uh, to scream and obviously operate the game. Um, so, still kind of trying to get over that sickness. I know we don't want to hear that. Because it reminds us of the Seattle Seahawks game. We knew he had some type of flu or whatever. He played and we lost. And Jalen Hurts didn't have his best game. But to be fair, I think Jalen Hurts had one of his better games. And I again, I don't like how Eagles Twitter clip baited that clip. Because they took it the wrong way. I don't think Jalen Hurts would have ever mentioned he was sick. Y'all just took it the wrong way. A lot of people took it the wrong way, and uh, it's good that Jalen Hurts looked like he's in a clear headspace, and he really wants to win. And we're going to see how this team handle adversity. But the positive thing about Jalen Hurts is that he's doing really good against the Blitz, like really good. 
and actually let me play that breakdown by Fran Duffy. More of a pressure look here. So you've got a bunch of guys up on the line of scrimmage, only four guys at the second and third level. They're disguising a pressure here, Atlanta. And so uh, you're sending the nickel corner. You're dropping some linebackers out. There's safety rotation. This is a little bit more of a complicated pressure than some of these other ones that we're looking at. Jalen Hurts throws right into the void, knows exactly where to go with the football. He hits Dallas Goddard here. Goddard's able to drop step and get downhill for a nice little pickup against the Blitz. And really what stood out to me as well is that it's not just about Jalen Hurts and his understanding of where the Blitz needs to be, but it's also pre-snap. The Eagles have their protection rules in order. The offensive line, the running backs, the tight ends, they are, it's very rare that we have seen free runners come through where guys had uh, mental errors uh, on these blitzes. And here's a good example. This is that Goddard completion from the end zone angle. And again, you've got this pressure look. Six guys up on the line of scrimmage. So those six are going to be accounted for by the five offensive linemen and the running back. And once the protection is set, that is the protection. Now, what the Eagles are doing here is that you're essentially getting a four-man slide. You're going to get everyone from Landon Dickerson to his right, everybody is flowing to the right. So Lane Johnson has that rusher off the edge. Makai Becton has the defensive tackle. Cam Jurgens has the nose tackle right over top of him. Landon Dickerson has the, the linebacker there, Troy Anderson. Saquon Barkley has the other linebacker there in the hole. Jordan Mailata has the pass rusher off the left side. Now, again, both of these linebackers are dropping out. Look at Saquon Barkley's eyes. He gets right to, where's that most dangerous man? Where's this other extra rusher coming from? He's able to step up and pick up the slot corner D. Alford, if the ball does not come out fast, Saquon's there to help his guy out and keep a hit off the quarterback. So really nice job from an assignment standpoint of not just Jalen Hurts, but the protection scheme as well. You see what I mean? Jalen Hurts is doing good against the blitz. That's what we asked him to do. But we got to get him to win. Two and what, seven the last nine games is ugly work. That's ugly work because one of the things I bid Jalen Hurts up on He's a winner, but that record showing this nigga is a loser. So we got to fix that. We definitely have to fix that. Get back to winning football games with or without A.J. Brown. Jalen Hurts, got to do it. Devontae Smith, he's getting paid $25 million a year. He got to be able to handle that spot. But who's going to step up in that number two spot? That's the question. Will it be Goddard? Will it be Britton Covey? Who would it be? And while we talking about Britton Covey, man, y'all got to leave my guy Britton Covey alone. Why is he getting all these targets, this and that? He don't deserve it. We got to get Jahad Dotson involved. I mean, I seen the play. Like, Britton Covey is scrappy. Like, it was a broken play, and Britton Covey knew exactly what to do. And I'm letting the All-22 play right here how he fought back to Jalen Hurts to get that catch. I mean, it was six, he was six of six. He caught literally everything that went his way. Brandon Covey could have had about like 40, 50 yards this game, but the RPOs it was getting called back. I think Brandon Covey played great. I think he played phenomenal, and I think y'all hating on my nigga Brandon Covey. I ain't going to lie to y'all. I think y'all hating on him. And I get it. You want Jahad Dotson to work because Jahad Dotson, we traded a third-round pick for him. And if he don't work, that means damn near all our free agents were duds. Besides Zach Bond, you got to think about it. If Jahad Dotson don't work, we just gave away a third-round pick. Devin White thing. It's not going good. We're going to talk about him, too. That's not going good. So what's going on? And then you got to – who else did we sign over the offseason? Uh, Isaiah Rogers. We just got him bench riding. We got Isaiah Rogers bench riding. So that means, like, yo, literally all our free agents we signed were, were duds. And we got lucky with Zach Bond. So that that's not good at all. Oh, yeah, of course, Saquon Barkley is playing at a high level. But besides Saquon and besides that bond, the free agents we got, we don't know what we don't know what they could bring. We don't. But Fangio, you know, he he's stuck in his ways. That just is what it is. Jahad Dotson didn't have time to build chemistry with Jalen Hurts. I, I have no clue what's going on with our free agents right now that we signed. Besides Saquon and besides that bond, is that bond 
he looked okay. Maybe he was a victim of the defensive line playing bad. He looked okay. But the, the free agents, it's not looking too good. Unless I'm missing somebody. What, CJ GJ? I mean, he's missing tackles. He came up clutch a couple times, but he's missing tackles himself. So that means damn near every free agent we sign, it's, it's not looking good. It's not looking good. And I like CJ GJ. I love CJ Garner Johnson, but five missed tackles, five missed tackles in two games, that's not good football. That's soft shit. You missing tackles? So we gotta we gotta figure this out of like what's going on. It, again, it's it's only week two. We gotta figure out how we're gonna use the guy we traded for, these free agents, et cetera, et cetera. Because that means how we wasted a lot of resources. And Bryce Huff, don't don't get me started. And I'm sick of harping on him because everybody's attacking him. I don't have to say nothing. Bryce Huff, is, he's just not it. He's not ready for that role. It's not. He's not ready to be that top guy. So I, I, might, I might make a whole video about just talking about the free agents we signed. Because I'm thinking off the top of my head. But back to Britton Covey, man. Britton Covey, to me, he deserved everything. He looked like the second best guy. You you got to find a way. Again, I still agree. You got to find a way to get your high dots involved, especially Dallas Goddard. Especially Dallas Goddard because he's your big target. He's your mismatch. And I think that's more Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore got to scheme stuff up for Dallas Goddard because A.J. Brown is going to be out. You got to scheme up something. One thing I liked about Kellen Moore is how he schemed up stuff for his tight ends. You got to figure that out with Dallas Goddard. He He's too talented to get one or two catches per game, especially with A.J. out. You got to get him involved. And, I, again, I love what Brent Covey is doing. He's working for everything. And y'all hating on him, but he's working for everything. And I appreciate that. I definitely appreciate Covey for that. But let's talk about, man, Devin White. Every time I hear him talk, it, it breaks my heart, man. It really, really do. And I feel bad for him because he, he it's the same thing with Isaiah Rogers. First team, not really hearing nothing bad. And all of a sudden, he's just a healthy scratch. But he talked about this. And he talked about the him and Vic Fangio talk about it and how is he, you know, feeling about everything. And this is what he had to say. Uh, I don't know. I think uh, I've been through a lot of my life, uh, good and bad, you know, open and public, private. And uh, it just it just make you grow up. You know what I'm saying? You know, everything not going to always be in your favor, you know, but it's about, about how you respond. You know how you uh, handle yourself, but that's the only thing I can control. You know, I can't put myself in the game, but I can control my attitude, my effort at practice, and you know, just uh, my swagger in the building. Still, you know, coming here every day like a pro and handling my business. Rather, you know, I feel like my I got a son. He can cry when he don't get his way. You know, that's for for him to do, not me. You know, I gotta set this down. I guess what you can do to get out there. Nah. Might tell y'all. I don't know. <laughs> he remains positive. He's remaining positive. And what I like about this, this whole stretch of whatever was going on, is testing his character. And maybe Vic Fangio give him a shot. Because I want to see him as a blitzer. I want to see him, you know, sub in from time to time. Like, I have to see it with my own eyes, unless he was that bad. But I, I didn't hear nothing bad, and I didn't hear nothing too good about Devin White. So I, I honestly don't know. But... What I do know is he's too talented just to be a healthy scratch, especially with a weak defense like ours. You got to rotate guys to see how they moving. Like, we got lucky that we activated Thomas Booker because we probably wouldn't have seen it if he wasn't activated. I want to see Jalen Hunt. Like, I want to see new guys on the field to see how it works. To, to, to see what works and what clicks Because what I've seen is like When Milton Williams is subbing that game time It works When Thomas Booker hopefully get more snaps It's working So I got to see if Devin White If he was able to rotate would it work I, I don't know 
I, I simply don't know, but we know how Vic Fangio is. He gets stuck in his ways. It's his way or the highway. It just is what it is. And maybe Vic Fangio is in his feelings. I got to keep it a beam because he said, Devin White, that, you know, after the injury, and he said, like, yo, did you talk to Vic Fangio about the spot? He's like, nah, big dog. I ain't talked to that guy. He ain't tell me, like, my spot was taken. I found out game day like y'all. Maybe he, you know, got in his feelings. Like, oh, man, I me bench him now. Like, that, that's not cool. It's not cool, especially in the game of football. You, you can't get in your feelings like that, man. Simply can't. But that's all I got for you guys today. And, hey, man, what do you think? How do you feel about everything? Uh, A.J. Brown being out, but we still got to find a way to win. And Jalen Hurts, man, stop clickbaiting my guy name, man. Y'all got to stop clickbaiting his name. Uh, Britton Covey, scrappy, deserved every target he got. I'm sorry, y'all. He was finding ways to get the ball. The free agents, what's going on? And Devin White, man, sad story, man. Sad, sad story. And this is Eagle Al, man.